Hey now everyone, welcome back to a brand spanking new episode of the Entertainment Budacast OG edition, which usually means we're going to talk about some video games, if you know what I'm talking about. So today I'm, I'm here with my friends Anna and Keith, and we're going to talk about the dog days of summer gaming and how it may or may not suck. It really depends on your point of view and, and what you like to do over the summer in terms of your video game playing. also want to do a brief discussion, very brief, because Keith has yet to play the game on the Batmobile in Batman Arkham Knight. Yes, it's a piece of shit. No, actually, it's a great little vehicle, and it's fun and all that, but for some reason, Rocksteady just really wanted to jam it in your face that the Batmobile was in Arkham Knight. So things get a little, you know, it's just a little tedious with the car. So whatever, we'll get to that later. Let's get to introductions. We'll head down south to where it's warm and muggy, where I was last week blowing things up with fireworks. And no, I did not blow off any fingers. See, I'm smarter than an NFL player. So, here we go. Anna, how's it going? It's going well. It is very hot and muggy and gross. I'm, yeah, it sucks I'm, down there. Ugh. I mean, that, that, that weather right now is awful. It is. Although, we went to Siesta Key and took, a like, a rental pontoon boat out. That was kind of fun. Yeah. And, until I beached it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm like, yo, we're not supposed to go this way. And my brother-in-law's like, no, go here. Look, we, we can make it. I'm like, okay. And sure enough, right up on some, like, oyster beds. It's like... <laughs> But they jumped out, cut up their feet, and pushed me off, so then we made it back safely. Ooh. So, hey, it was all yeah. fun. All right, so in addition to Anna tonight, we also have the other OG Budacast broadcaster, Keith Mathias, getting ready to go for a night on the town in, what are we doing, Baltimore? Baltimore. All right. Baltimore, yeah. Might yeah, man, moved a little bit. <laughs> no, uh, hopefully not. I think I'll, think I'll be able to avoid it. Avoid those but. parts of town. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, I mean, everything's all up on top of each other, if you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you walk a block, and it's like, oh, hey, here's somebody who makes $5 million a year. And then you walk another block, and nobody makes anything. Yeah, so it's just kind of weird. someone pissing himself with a jar looking for money. Yeah, man. That's that's light, life in B-more. That, that. I love it. <laughs> Every city needs that type of character, you know. You gotta have uh, for the real, dude. with the poor. That's American society, people. What's Rich up? for the win, poor go to war. All right, so here we go. So, guys, you know, we were kind of talking before we fired up the official Budacast, turned the mics on. We're talking about the the dog days of summer, not just in terms of heat and I think my air conditioning's broken, but in terms of of gaming. And how it's pretty much been made a tradition that during the summer, no new games get released. Or if they do get released, they're either indie titles, remasters, titles you've never heard of, and titles you would never play. So I think this summer has been a tad bit different. I mean, the whole Batman in June was definitely not normal compared to recent summers and the trends we've seen. But still, it's like we're in a rut now. I mean, July especially you know, kicked off last week. And there is – I can't think of any new game on the horizon that I'm just dying to play in, unless we want to, like, move towards the end of August with the uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And that's just kind of how things go in the summer with gaming. So we want to tackle it from both angles. You know, there's, there's going to be people that think this time of the year sucks for gaming, right? The people that they, they want to consume new games on a, a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis and they can't. Uh, they don't want to be social with their family and friends. They don't want to go outside because the sun will melt their fragile white skin. Stuff like that. And then there's also the people like uh, Keith admitted to it. And again, there's nothing wrong to it, to each their own, that appreciate the summer drought of new video games so they can catch up on the thousands of games they missed during the previous months because let's face it you know we've talked about this before and we did our backlog conundrum cast that these days with all the indies and and game sales and digital distribution it's very easy to amass 30 50 new games in in one year's time and obviously 
depending on lengths of games, you're not going to get to every single one. I mean, that's just there's no way to do it unless you clone yourself or you know get six more arms and five more TVs to to get things moving here. So let, let's start from I, I guess we'll let, let's focus on Keith's perspective where. Sometimes this is a good thing to not have any new games. So, Keith, if you would elaborate on, on why you believe uh, summertime is actually a great time to be a gamer. Yeah, um, so you pretty much hit on sort of the, the, the basics of that whole shebang. We pack, and, and I say we as in the industry, we pack so many good games into this really kind of late August, September time frame that runs through Christmas so you know if it's it's there for the holiday season and then we kind of have another uh, run through of uh, some big releases I guess from what like like February through April yeah, May yeah, they, they, January is pretty quiet the end of mm-hmm. December is pretty quiet but yeah like you said end of February March for sure things you, mm-hmm. you're always going to get a big triple A yeah and then there's there's there might be a couple trickles uh through May and June like like you I'm mean, Arkham Knight's probably going to be our last big one until the end of August um and what 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 was the last one before that Witcher um, 3 I yeah think. yeah the Witcher 3 so I mean we could talk about that the Witcher 3 is the only game I've played since it's it since it came out and I am green with envy over I, that statement. Yeah, yeah, dude. I have not played anything other than The Witcher 3, and I've put probably 100 hours into it, and it's fucking awesome. Are you even remotely close to being done, or are you just still going through and knocking oh, out? You, you'll, you'll be riding done. on Roach, and you'll be like, <laughs> you'll see a dude in an exclamation point. You're like, all right, I'll go help him out on this side quest. And then, oh, let me pr- continue with this side quest. Oh, here's another one. Oh, let me go kill well, something in a Witcher quest. I mean, there's just so much yeah. shit to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting to the point where uh, I'm close to the end of the story. Okay. I can feel that coming on. But then I uh, like I'm hanging out in like the Velen Novingrad regions of the game, and I open up my world map, and I still see 200 question marks. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean that that game can almost <laughs> give you a panic attack. There's so much shit to do. If yeah, if you're some- like, oh my god, how am I ever? Like if you're yeah. one of those people that just absolutely need to complete 100 percent of the things to do in a game, maybe The Witcher Three is not for you. Because or might- maybe maybe it is because you don't have anything else to play this <laughs> summer. And like you yeah, said, true. I mean, you're looking at at least at least a hundred hours. I'd say probably closer one fifty, maybe even two hundred. Pro- possibly going- two if yeah. maybe your uh, reaction time isn't that good, and you really want that trophy for uh, beating it on the hardest difficulty. Yeah, not gonna happen. It, it's hard. It's hard enough on normal. I mean, anyone that's played The Witcher games knows that mm-hmm. it's not a fucking hack and slash button masher. I mean, you yeah. will get your ass kicked if you just go into even casual battles, just whacking your sword around like you mm-hmm. can in some some other RPGs. So, yep. Yeah, the but Witcher. yeah, so so it's awesome the fact that you know I have this game and I have that. Okay, so so The Witcher needs you need to have like a month to be like okay well this is the only thing that i'm gonna play this month well you, you could make the case you need three months honestly i mean it yeah. depends on your your schedule and if you work mm-hmm. or don't work vacations kids no kids yeah visitors, all, all that stuff shit. like that i mean i the reason i haven't been able to dedicate time to is because you know it came out and then two weeks later we're getting ready for e3 i was yeah. out at e3 doing all the coverage from that and then batman comes out i jump on that to maybe get a review i'm still playing it even though it's two weeks old sorry people i can only do so many things at once but yeah so i like i said i'm definitely envious that you've gotten to just sink in this time with the witcher 3 because i completely agree with you it is you can get lost in that game just doing the most random of shit and just you, you get you know soaking in the beauty of the graphics and the mm-hmm. world and you know all the time and effort that CD put into the game it's just it is amazing i mean there's there's no way this game should not be considered as game of the year come come december uh, it's it's definitely up there i can't think of uh, maybe a few others few smaller games or in the blind forest maybe that even achieve its level of uh, fame at this point yeah. in time or just awesomeness so. i haven't played bloodborne yet so yeah, well that that's for that'll, masochistic that'll gamers i, I don't I, 
I'm Dude, sure it's honestly, fantastic. Honestly, The Witcher's pretty fucking hard. And well, you're playing it on hard, right? Well, I'm I'm playing it on uh, not Death March, which is the hardest difficulty. Okay, but, but I'm playing it on like the Broken Bones, yeah. like the one step down. Yeah, because I was right, scared. Right. I was like, yeah. okay, well, I played like ten hours of The Witcher Two on normal, and it was all sorts of difficult. Because I hadn't figured out how to play it yet. I went in, like you said, like mashing my sword. Oh, yeah. Like trying it's God to, of War or something. Like, oh, I'll just keep pounding uh, uh, on Yeah, I was just like, button. oh, well, like, you know, this looks like Shadow of Mordor, which I've just spent the past three months playing. Um, let's, you know, mindset hasn't changed yet. You go in and, you know, now that I've put like 100 hours into the game, I'm like, okay, well, I've got my oils. I've got my potions. I have my Lube master crafted gear. Up, I have... Like yeah, I'm 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 ready to rock. It's just a mindset shift. So I don't know. Maybe Bloodborne's not as hard as we're making it out to be. Maybe Ooh. we just have to figure it out. I don't know. I'll find out when I play it. Some tough shit here against the Bloodborne crowd. I don't know. We'd have to ask Ray. I mean, he, I yeah. think he's the only one that's really sunk time in the Bloodborne. Word. It's just I don't know. I, I mean, I checked out the. What the fuck's it called? Dark Souls Three at E3. Yeah. It, it looks fucking fantastic but considering one of the guys that designed the game died like five times in a demo for press that he shouldn't <laughs> have died in i'm like you know what i think i'll just stick to my uh, nice cute and cuddly marvel mighty heroes yeah all right anna let's loop you into the conversation <laughs> yeah. so uh, kind of talk to us oh i'm what's your take on the summer i mean do you like the break of, of new games coming out so you can catch up on the I, backlog I do. or you, I... you kind of get bummed well, out no i mean i i appreciate it because i i like to get an opportunity to catch up on my backlog of games only to then add more to it because there are some good sales that go on during the summer too so you can get some games relatively cheap that you didn't have an opportunity to get in the fall or during you know during the holidays but then it just adds but you know it is what it is but uh true there is oh sorry no yeah but i mean i just played arkham knight and then um I was like, well, I need to go back to playing Destiny because I want to be a level 34 already. I need to reconfigure my life then because I, I, <laughs> I, I literally don't have time to play these big games anymore. And I, I, I think I know a reason why I don't. But I just, I, I mean, I'm struggling to complete a Batman in a timely amount of time. Obviously, I I've, I've, I'm, might be a little over a quarter of the way through The Witcher 3, and I feel like I've dumped a ton of time into it. But... You know, you guys are like, oh, yeah, we're catching up on games. And I'm sitting here going, well, fuck, it's already past July 4th, which means the summer's basically over. <laughs> and I haven't completed The Witcher 3 or Batman Arkham Knight yet. <laughs> I, I haven't really completed any games this summer. So I'm like, what the hell am I doing when I'm supposed to have all this free time to play games that I missed out on? You're so. going to E3 and going on vacation and shit. Oh, yeah. man, vacation, stand me. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, uh, and... I know I talk about this every time we're on, but I mean it's just Marvel Mighty Heroes is my gaming life, at this point <laughs> in time. and and it will be. I literally play this game religiously every single day. I have a routine. I play as soon as I wake up. I wait a couple hours for my gems to re, uh, replenish, play it again, and then I'll, I'll do that as many times as I can throughout the day when I have he, like a twenty twenty five. He sure window. does. I was a witness to it during E three. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'd be in the I'd be in the back of uh, Anna's Anna's whip, sitting there trying to get in some matches. I mean, it is it's a sickness at this point. I spend money almost every week now, so kudos to DNA Games because they've got me completely locked into this title. So I guess for my summer gaming, I've uh, I got the Hulkbuster, I got oh, yeah. Lockjaw. Last week I got Hobgoblin. This week I'm shooting for Giant Man. I mean, you never know when they release a new weekly issue what the special prize will be mm. if you spend way more time than you should playing a mobile game to earn yeah. it. So it, that's, I mean, honestly, guys, that is what I do. That's really when I sit down at night after I'm done work and sometimes it's not even until 9 or 10 and I'm like, do I want to play The Witcher? Do I want to play Batman? Or do I want to just lay there with my gut hanging out and my iPad? <laughs> <laughs> and play Marvel Mighty Heroes, Star Wars Commander, Boom Beach, and now the Fallout Shelter, which I'm hoping this new update fixes mine because I, I can't even open it anymore on my iPad, and I was kind of digging that game. 
so yeah, I, I am a freaking free-to-play mobile game crackhead, wow. officially fully confirmed at this point. I might as well get rid of my consoles, get rid of my <laughs> PC, yeah. because the only thing that really I want to play are these stupid-ass yeah. games. I, I, I think Anne has played Mighty Heroes, and, and she can attest to, like, it, it's it's essentially brain dead. Yeah. You, you just sit there and <laughs> yeah, tap on tap, the screen you, like, and... And swipe a couple times. Wait, wait for your special ability to load up. Yeah. And then you just like. There's just something about it. Tap tap an enemy. And then boom. There's something about seeing my name in the in the top ten of the highest leaderboard. And, and getting in there and usually placing first against three other people. I guess it's my. Uh, since I can't compete in online FPS games anymore. I guess this is my way to feel good about myself and my gaming skills i can tap and swipe better than more <laughs> of you motherfuckers than you think <laughs> my fingers they have like blisters on them i tap so fast my index fingers like if i would have blown off my index finger my life would have been over with a firework like these idiot football players i mean i don't even know how you do that because i was in florida and my brother-in-law we spent uh, it's buy one get one free again. If you've never been to Florida Fourth of July, I recommend you do yeah. it because there are no laws. The, the there are yeah. no laws. The fireworks are always buy one and get one free. No laws. You, you don't even have to go to like a, a, a community to watch a group fireworks because right in your neighborhood, people will be blowing off fireworks you've seen at stadiums, concerts, whatever. So we we dropped like five hundred dollars on fireworks. Whew. Buy one get one free. Um, so it was half of that, essentially. And it was just... I, I don't know how you blow off your fucking fingers. I almost did once when I was, like, 10. Well, you're 10! <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? You don't know any better. <laughs> you're not a fully functioning no. adult. <laughs> I mean, the, these guys, these NFL... Two of them. Two NFL athletes well, lost digits. One probably blew his career because he's a fucking cornerback, and he needs his fingers to catch the ball and grab the jerseys and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, guys, you're making millions of dollars. I get the thrill of lighting fireworks, but if, if you're using stuff that can blow off your hands, don't you think you should maybe enlist some help? Maybe pay like a fireman. Well, or there was to do it there for was you? that that news story where I don't know. If, I think the guy was in Maine where he was setting off a firework on his head, and it ended up killing okay. him. Okay. Well, that's just a fucking idiot right, right there. Right? I mean, like. So what are these guys doing to blow their hand? I mean, that's got to be but a that's pretty just dumb size firework. Too. I mean, these guys, like you were saying, they, they need their hands. They need their bodies to make a right. living. And It's not like the NFL has guaranteed right. salaries like the other professional sports. I mean, it, literally, if these guys can't play, their teams can go, hey, go fuck yourself. We don't owe you any money. See you later. Right. I mean, you, an NFL athlete, you might make it to 30, 35 Maybe a bit older if you're quarterback, but it, it's a very limited career. So why would you, for one day to light off fireworks, put that in jeopardy? I don't know. Whatever. And I'm not being a hypocrite. I love fucking blowing off fireworks, but I'm also not getting paid millions of dollars yeah. to play a sport. Sa safety so. first, people. That's it. That's all we're preaching. Yeah. If I blow off my fingers, I won't have to worry about running Entertainment Buddha anymore because I won't be able to type. <laughs> that would be like a big relief. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so back to the dog days of summer gaming. R real quick, I mean, what? my opinion, I'm kind of both sides. Uh, I think in the past when I didn't have the website to fully consume my gaming life, I definitely would be with you two as far as, yeah, I can catch up on stuff I've missed. Uh, but now I feel like I only get a brief amount of time to play games, so I might as well get in as many new ones as possible, not old ones, to you know create new content, share it out, try to get some hits and views. So... As we've discussed, my gaming life 100% is fully dictated by Entertainment Buddha. I mean, it, there, there's outside, and that's probably why I do flock to these fucking mobile games, because mm -hmm. I know they're not, you know, nothing I need to worry about creating content for. So I, I'm kind of in between. I, I, I think the interesting thing is why don't publishers and developers release big, not. Okay, we know indie games come out every week and random PC games. Sure, I'm talking. This is more about the the AAA juggernaut type of games. Why don't they come out in the summer? Right. What do What do you guys think? I mean, what, which I I have a I, actually I don't really even have a thought. It, it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to I mean, me. Did you guys know. have? I mean, the only thing that I can think of is like it's the summertime. You know, a lot of maybe a lot of people are on vacation they're not home so it's like what's you True. know what's the point and then you have what e3 going on in the summer and then you have like comic-con and like whatever else 
goes on and it's like well what's the point of you know putting something out that maybe no one's going to be around to get I mean and they know some of these bigger like triple a games like the people behind them they already know that come holiday come holiday season well people need gifts people you you need to buy something to give a gamer so why not push the big bigger titles out in the fall you know well I, i'll be a play devil's advocate to that is yeah I, I think you're right people are not as stationary in the summer as they are during the year but you also have a, a huge population of, of gaming centric individuals that have nothing to right. do for three months, and I, I'm talking about the Summer K through vacation. twelve scene. Yeah, so I mean that that's your core demographic of gamers. Yeah, they might go with the family for maybe two right. weeks throughout the summer. If it's a rich family, maybe more. But they're mainly sitting around just going, I need to spend money on something and play something. So why not give them that game? And to your point with the the holiday sales. If I, if I know I'm going to be releasing my game the same week as another huge popular franchise, why would I not want to try to right. cut them out and yep. get more sales and, and maybe release well, yeah. early September or late August? Yeah, because, what is it, in October, it's Halo 5 coming out, but then, what, the following week is Call of Duty. Uh, it's, it's, it's like... Yeah, the, the recent trend has Siege. been... <laughs> October, yeah. November are dead. They're hell. They're hell months for people like us that have to cover games because yeah. it's literally la last October. It was every single week. I mean, no shit. From Destiny really through Call of Duty in late November, there was a brand new huge AAA yeah. game coming out every week. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's insane. If, if not more than one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's insane. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there, there's so much competition during that window. So I, I don't I don't get it, Keith. What do you have any? Uh, I, I, I think it's entirely uh, driven by the fact that games are treated as retail products. Yeah. And, that, and that's when, when, when do people spend the most money on yeah. retail yeah. for the holiday? I, I agree, man. I think you have this huge population of gamers that are home for summer break. And, I mean, for people like, I, I mean, us like uh, and the, the teachers that are also then off for a couple of months, like, we want shit to do too, right. like being able to play some new games or, or something. Just, or just to I mean, look forward. I mean, th yeah, we're getting older and older, but I still look forward when it, you know, like a game like Halo Five Gears of War, mm -hmm. or the Horizon, the game got announced for PS4. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a new movie. You look forward to it. You, 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 you kind of are pining for it. Like, oh, that was sweet. And in July we'll get or we'll get this game. In June we're gonna get Batman. And now it's just like, well, fuck, we're not gonna even we're gonna get a Gears of War remake at the end of August, and then mm -hmm. it, it's like Anna said, it's not even until I believe mid to late October yeah. that you're you're gonna start getting Halo Five and Star Wars Battlefront and well, all I that stuff that's been promised to us. I think it'll, I think it'll kick us. off with um, the expansion from Destiny, and then from there, it'll like continue on with all these games coming out. Hey, don't yeah. forget about Disney Infinity 3.0. Oh, it got true. its release August. date bumped up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it got, that got bumped up from like September, I yeah. think. So. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird thing. We almost need uh, Michael Patcher, or someone that does the, the business of gaming, to, to let mm -hmm. us know. Because you, you would think there, there's justifications on both ends. I think Keith's dead on that, that they know this one they're going to, you know, when, when people are more apt to spend money. But I also look at it like I, I think gamers are so dedicated to brands and franchises and studios that if Microsoft wanted to release Halo 5 next week, it would still sell the same amount oh, of gotcha. copies if they released it in yeah. October. Yeah, we'll spend, we'll spend yeah. money on anything no matter when it comes out. Yeah, yeah it's like they almost want to compete and be able to be like ha 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 we sold more copies right. than you when you could be like they could probably make even more copies because they're not competing for dollars i mean there are gamers we know we have our fanboys on both sides that are always gonna be like i'm only getting ps4 stuff but i mean these days it's like i just want i just want games yeah. I, I pay for games i don't care what platform they're on i just want games i'm willing to shed money but mm -hmm. even even having a career and dual income, no kids, all that bullshit. You know, I'm not saying I'm rich. I'm not poor. Uh, definitely middle class somewhere in there. So I mean, I have I have money, but sometimes, I mean, if you if you're releasing two, three must own AAA games in one week, that's asking a lot of even you know regular gamers, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. younger gamers especially. I mean, people in high school that are making eight bucks an hour, college kids that have no money. 
so you you are losing out on sales when you're going up against other major games within the same window. So who knows? I mean, there is a reason for it, obviously, or it wouldn't happen. But I don't think we're going to solve it. Mm-mm. Damn it. Yup. Thought we could get Halo 5 to release next I week. I know. But mm. Maybe if we, if, we, if huh. we wish it enough and we believe <laughs> enough. When you wish <laughs> upon a star. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. we could probably get Halo 5 released next week. The multiplayer wouldn't work for the next year. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's the new, uh, that's the new uh, development model by 343. <laughs> I still feel bad. I mean, I, I guess I don't feel bad for them, but I do. Because it's not like they're bad people and they did it on purpose. But yeah. It's like when I had my closed doors Halo meeting or the Halo 5 campaign and, and Bonnie was in there. I mean, literally the, the head of the studio. Mm-hmm. I just want to be like, so does that still hurt? Does that whole <laughs> Can MCC I give you a thing hug, please? still hurt? Because yeah, damn. Like, do, you, do you need a hug? Because that, that was rough. That was rough for them. But I, I'm telling you what, I think Halo 5 is going to be something freaking epic. Yeah. Yup. So much so that, yes, I did get the collector's edition with the massive statue because it's oh. badass. I've seen it in person, people. I can tell you it's probably worth $10, but I'll pay the 240 <laughs> By the way... Oh no! Don't say it. Who else? Who else is gonna get the Black Ops Three Collector's oh. Edition with the mini fridge? Oh man, I don't even care about Call of Duty, but I want exactly, that. I want dude. that Collector's Edition. Exactly. <laughs> I saw. I was like, this is a fucking joke, but it, no, it's real. I mean, it yeah. Is. The Juggernaut Edition comes with a mini fridge that can hold a twelve pack. Really? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Where are we going with these collector's editions? I actually kind of like it. I think that it's just the most insane batshit packing item I've ever heard of. But it is awesome. I mean, we've talked before about how awesome Call of Duty's uh, collector's editions are. Yeah, I mean, they like the the, planes, the, the drone, done, the uh, functioning night vision night goggles. Night vision goggles. Like, I mean, Jesus, you gotta be. It's just fantastic with the yeah. what packing in here. Have you checked it out, Anna? Have you looked I'm at what's in? Trying it? to. I'm blue. We, we we should have the post up today. I think Nat did it. There's a it would say like something about zombies or this that or the other thing. But there's an image of it. It's a legit mini fridge, and I think it's what key two hundred bucks or something. Uh, yes, like two hundred bucks. So it's oh. not even as expensive as other shittier collectors editions. Speaking of which, I I think between Anna and I, we're we probably now at this point spent a thousand dollars on collectors editions for shit <laughs> coming out in the fall. Because we got the Pit Boy edition, which is. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> How much was that one? Uh, 150 at least. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, oh, that's not as bad as but, I would have thought. Uh, okay. If you have the Gamers Club through Best Buy, you can pre order the Pip edition and you can still get it for 20% off. So you can get it for 100 bucks. There you go. And hmm. with the tips. Just saving that cash insane. for you. Dropping knowledge. Yeah, right that down, 20 percent off brand new games. That's part of the reason why I have such a backlog. Because when you don't have to pay sixty dollars for a game, and you're like justifying mm-hmm. spending fifty. Like, well, yeah, okay. they trick you. That's the whole the, the whole Steam yeah, sales. That's all they are. They're just fucking tricks. Because they're like, you're never playing this shit, so we're just gonna wheel it out for cheap prices and get you to buy yep. it. I mean, I bought the $75 Star Wars Super Bundle. I haven't played one of the games. I haven't even <laughs> installed one of the games. I literally just said, here, take my money. I want them. I'll never play them, but you can have it. So, no, yeah, th- this fall in particular feels like there is a ridiculous amount of expensive yeah. collector's editions. you got the Halo. You now have the Black Ops. We've got Disney Infinity. So someone like me that has nothing, I'm getting the, the Super Duper PS4 Boba Fett edition thing. Oh, word. Uh, oh, damn it. There was another one. What was the other one? No! Anyways, there's a lot of expensive yeah. stuff coming out. So it's going to be an expensive entertainment Buddha type of fall. Uh, even though I'll, we'll probably get some of the games for a review. So I, you, know, you never know. Maybe I'll give out my copy that I had on pre-order to you, our adoring fans. Three of you. Maybe up to five at this point. <laughs> right. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I think we've, we've kind of exhausted the dog days of summer. Gaming sucks and all that. I, I just want to do a, a brief, you know, spoken editorial, and, and Anna can chime in on the Batmobile in Batman Arkham Knight. Okay. So there's not going to be any spoilers here, people. It's just, this is just kind of a rant on the Batmobile. 
So if you've played the game, by now you've realized that Rocksteady is very, very impressed with the Batmobile they've created. So much so that it makes up a bulk of the gameplay in this this go round of the Arkham Knight. Or yeah, the Arkham it's. Franchise. I think it's like I, I would want to say like maybe a good thirty to forty percent of the game yeah. relies on the Batmobile. Right, and we're talking core missions yeah. too, not just side quest bullshit. Mm-mm. I'm talking core missions, and, and my biggest problem with it is. It's it's overused in some of the segments. It just it's just clunky, and you're just going why? And it's just why stupid. would why the fuck would Batman drive his car up a building? Right. I was just okay. <laughs> that happens in those shitty Bat Batman movies, right? The one with George Clooney. Oh where yeah, he drives mm-hmm. up the side up of the building. building. Okay, mm-hmm. yep. my point has been proven right there. Not only does he, <laughs> mm-hmm. not only do you have to drive shit up buildings. You have to platform a vehicle. Yep. And the vehicle, it's not like it has jumping abilities or anything. You literally have to position it, uh, get jumps yep. ready, jump over stuff, land on little platforms, yep. etch around to the next ramp and jump up another Oh, that one. was, you're, you're that was the roof that I fell off, like, yeah, it, I don't it, know, 15 it, times. It, it, thank you. Thank you. I, literally, it, and, I mean, and that's right at the beginning of the game. And it took yes. me, like, a good 30 to 40 minutes and <laughs> my husband was watching me, and he's just like, that looks very annoying. And I'm like, it's fucking annoying. Like, I want to break this controller right now. I just... Right. I just, and uh, that's not a feeling you want to have in gamers' minds within the first hour right. of playing your game. And, and I, I, I'm, I, I'm with you right there. I, when I saw the Batmobile and the shit you can do with it and how you can fight with it and jump in it, that's, that's great. Drive around town's fantastic. The Batmobile-centric missions, like chasing down the... The, the vehicles and this, that, and the other thing, those are great. They all make sense. What, what I take umbrage with is, is Rocksteady just <laughs> infusing it into every it's, damn mi- – I mean, it's just like – I know the one you're talking about. I just did it where you, you have to like – you're in this underground subway tube, and you literally have to do like loop de loops oh, yeah. to go over walls, and it's like, fuck yeah. you. I just want to fucking be Batman. Yeah. I just want to get out and kick people's ass and glide around. I don't want to worry about redoing the same damn section over and over so I can position a ramp the proper angle, lock it down, jump back in it, and go this way. It's like, come on. I think I think I used battle mode more than I actually drove it because with battle mode, you can control it the way you want. The problem that I had, what, one of the big problems that I had with it was you know like your your trigger button your r2 button is your accelerator why oh, is the brake button on like the so square like it's the square so button stupid. i'm used to hitting l2 to brake like that's my brake r2 no, I, is my I'm, accelerator I'm with you. I, I, yeah that control scheme <sighs> is is dumb it's so stupid. And, and really by no means does a batmobile ruin Bat- batman arkham knight it, it's a fantastic game except if you bought it on pc we all know that travesty yeah. But as far as the console versions, it, I mean, I'm playing on PS4. It's been it's been a, a, a deer, no issues, no glitches. Visually, it looks fantastic. But like Anna said, there are times, and I don't even think it has anything to do with skill. There are times where you're just sitting there going, this game would be so much more fun, or this mission would be so much more fun if I didn't have to fuck around with the Batmobile yep. like it's Super Mario. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. We get it. You made the Batmobile. You put it in the Arkham franchise. Yeah. Fantastic. The, it it, it kind of felt like they decided to like put a good story and just like blend it with Grand Theft Auto. So I feel like I'm playing Batman Grand Theft Auto if that even makes any sense cuz you No, it, it you, does. Uh, I mean, I any time I don't have to use the Batmobile, oh, I'm, so I'm not using it. I'm so happy. I mean, I'm fucking flying oh, around yeah. the city like like you like you yeah. can like a boss. When uh, just fucking float for two thousand meters, glide yeah. up and down. When uh, <laughs> when they're like, okay, Fuck now it. you have to go over here, and then the waypoint uh, is put on the map, and you see it's like a thousand whatever away. I'm like, I'm just gonna fly over there because yeah. I don't have to drive. Exactly. I, d- I don't have ejection, to drive. Ejection, right? Ejection maneuver. Oh, yeah. XX. I'm out. Yep. Peace. So glad that, my way. That's my rant on the Batmobile. I just, I, it, it, last night in particular, and again, no, no spoilers, but it, it's towards the end. It's there's no boss fights in this game, by the way. I guess that's a spoiler if, if you haven't played it yet. Unlike the previous two, it's like there are and there 
are <laughs> oh, bless you thank you uh there are and there aren't i guess it just depends on how you look at it they're not they're not yeah. defined like they were yeah. before um the other thing but the one towards the end with oh yeah you know, a bunch that of the was enemy so tanks. annoying yeah that was so annoying. That, that can go that can go fuck its face yeah. for all i care yeah and then it's like if you miss the one turn it's like oh shit i gotta go all the way around like oh damn it it is and this is why i think i'm so pissed about because the game is fantastic mm -hmm. i mean it, it controls perfectly it's it's the story is amazing it's very dark i mean there's a lot of weird shit going on but then some of these these Batmobile segments literally just make me want to break my controller, and I get pissed off, and I don't want to play yeah. anymore. And I should not feel that way playing a game of this caliber. I really, I mean, yeah. th that's not a feeling I should be having. And then, uh, so Keith, <laughs> when you, what we're saying, when, and then when you need the the Batmobile for Riddler challenges, because there are going to be some where uh, the Riddler can go. Fuck it's himself. a race, <laughs> and it's timed. So it's not like you complete the race the first time and that's it, you're done. No, you have to do it three more times. And each time you do it, it you're, the amount of time you get to complete the course decreases by like 20 seconds. And Yeah, no thanks. It's, it's absolutely horrible because this, the same way like to that almost end mission where you're running around, like when you're driving around in the tunnels, you have to do the same thing with those Riddler challenges, but trying to drive and then control platforms that you need to maneuver the course is is stupid like i should not have to concentrate that hard on a minute 20 second like course like i should not i should just be able to drive and get my fucking trophy sorry i really fuck you trophies oh, so <laughs> fucking batmobile like seriously no, I, I already I made a conscious decision after a few of those platforming car sections. I was like, I, I'm not doing any Batmobile side side quests. I'm not doing any fucking races. Oh yeah, those can all go <laughs> suck my. There's, dick. I will I will give everyone a tip, and this at least has worked for me. Honestly, I think the best way to drive in the Batmobile is first person view. For yeah. some reason, when I'm in third person, that thing has zero traction. Oh. It has no stability. It's it's whipping all over the place. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in first person, I feel like I can turn as sharp yeah. as I want and go wherever I, I can, feel like. I so can tell you there. Keith, stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Buddy. There's Word. one, Tips two. and tricks. There's two <laughs> side missions that you need the Batmobile for. And it's really annoying because in in one of them, where it's like you ha you're chasing down some like vehicles or whatever and it's not really like a spoiler it's not really integral to the story but they drive so unusually fast that it's like <laughs> oh, yeah. it requires you to use the afterburner on the batmobile and if you cannot control the batmobile and you use that afterburner fuck that shit you're going all over the place like you yeah. go all over the place and then trying to recover it's like good luck so I, I hate it. So Keith, it. you ready to play Batman Arkham Knight yet? I am so excited, guys. You guys are making it th this <laughs> seem so fun. No, but we're doing an awesome sell no, job on it. And the funny thing is, I'll probably <laughs> review it in the in the 90s. <laughs> well, I, that's probably the reason why the game is going to get a 90 because of the Batmobile. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, it really is a good game. I mean, this story is fantastic. Like Matt said, it's really dark. Like there are moments where you're just like what am i even watching is this even really happening right now kind of thing so it's yeah, great some great yeah. scenes i mean it's it, it just it really is a probably the best arkham game except for the fucking yeah. Batmobile. i mean and there's and there's a, a a few good moments at the beginning where you're just like you, you don't expect certain things to happen and then they happen and you're just like oh oh okay all right i get it arkham knight i see what you're trying to do here I'll go along with it. Yeah. Well, I, I th I'm going to be it this weekend. By golly. Yeah. All right. So, Make it so. Be before we leave, just want to do a, a, a quick little deal. Everyone can give a, let's just say, one wish that they hope to see come true or hear about from SDCC this week. So, SDCC, that's San Diego Comic Con, the granddaddy of all cons, kicked off yesterday, runs through Sunday. It's, as, it's not just about comic books anymore. Hell, it's more about Hollywood than anything. But there's some gaming stuff out there, so on and so forth. So 
knowing what's out there, you know, DC has a heavy presence. Marvel's kind of light this year. I don't know. I don't even think they're of there. Games you're into. I don't even think Marvel. Yeah, they're doing like broadcasts yeah. from outside. But is there is there one thing in particular you you want to maybe watch? You know, like a, a, a a broadcast of one of the panels or is there something you're hoping releases like maybe a new trailer uh if nothing just say i don't give a shit about sdcc keith what do you think <laughs> um i don't know i know scott snyder and greg capullo are there that's the uh, the team behind the current batman run but i don't know if they're doing a panel so well, i know I, tomorrow I, I believe tomorrow I wish is the... that i could be there to get them to sign my batman number one booyah so that's my wish, but um, sorry, you were saying something. Oh, I just I, I believe tomorrow is the BVS Donna Justice panel, and and both the stars are are tapped, and they're also going to be signing autographs. And you would have to think we're going to get maybe a new trailer or maybe even a scene clip coming out of that one. So mm-hmm. I guess I would throw that up there. Yeah, as, as a cheap one. Obviously, all the SDCC exclusive Funko Pops, which. <laughs> I don't even want to admit this publicly. Don't don't do it. But I, I think I I think I have to. It's kind of no. like uh, my twelve step program. No. But uh, I broke down, and I bought the Batman versus Superman dual pack Funko Pop SDCC twenty fifteen exclusive <laughs> for two hundred. Oh man! Oh. I just and and it costs it costs twenty five dollars. And you and you know what's the crazy part is that. A friend of mine is actually there, and had I known that she was going, I would have been like, so can you find this for me? But There's no way. Here's the the deal. I'll I'll let you in on a secret. I have two guys there. One is an exhibitor. He's a a local comic book artist that lives around me. Uh, I gave him a list of all the pops I wanted. He's like, I'll try. And another guy's a friend. And they both said, they're like, dude, on Thursday at 5 a.m., the Funko line was already capped. Damn. At 5 in the morning, it was capped to fucking buy Funko Pops. So all you haters out there making fun of my Funko Pop obsession, it's real. It's it's real. (laughs) I'm going to be rich, motherfuckers. I'm going to be rich. So anyways, yeah, I spent 200 fucking dollars on a dual pack of Funko Pops, and I, it, I don't feel good about it. I feel dirty. I feel like a scumbag. I feel like I got used and abused, which I did, <laughs> but based on the reports I was getting from the show floor, I knew I wasn't going to get one for retail, and before the prices get insane on eBay, because just to put that in perspective, last week when this figure was announced by Funko... Pre-orders on eBay were already going for 150 bucks. That's stupid. As of as of today, the one I got was the cheapest I've seen. Most now are 270 to 300. So we're talking about this toy already is increasing its value exponentially. Obviously, in the collecting game, value is in the eye of the beholder. But considering that the eBay prices are climbing, even the single ones are going for 60 to 70 dollars. It, it's fucking nuts, guys. I mean, I've watched Funko Pop from its inception. And, you know, I could get into San Diego exclusives easy peasy two, three years ago. Last year was the first one where things started getting nuts. Uh, But now, I mean, it's it's like black market gold for people. I mean, there are people that go there just to wait in line all day at Funko Pop and buy fucking Funkos to sell on eBay for a tidy markup. I mean, $25 and this dude made $200 from me? Mm -mm. Come on. I mean, there's more suckers out there like me, or these eBay prices would not be getting driven up. So, I have a feeling it's going to be a very expensive July for Matt mm. because <laughs> there's no way I'm letting these go. I mean, there's about ten of them that I wanted, and mm. I want the I want the fucking blue crystal Heisenberg, the maskless Flash, uh, black suit Ant Man. I mean, it's just they're they're beautiful. Yeah, I'm, lo- I'm looking on eBay right now, and there's one auction that ends in 18 hours and 34 minutes, and it's up to 142 dollars and 50 cents. Yeah, and that will go for well over 200. So today, when I saw one ending early, and I saw it was around 200, I'm like, dude, you know you're never gonna be able to to sleep or feel good about yourself if you don't have this in your collection. That's do it. And I did it. Mm-mm. And I probably will be doing it for all the other ones because I just I have to. I mean, I, it's a sickness, like I said. But 
one day if I ever do feel like selling these things, I actually know that they probably will make a little bit of money because my my headless Ned from years ago is five hundred bucks now. Wow. Five hundred fucking dollars for Funko Pops, and it might be three years old. So that's uh, not a bad collectible to get into. So that's my wish. I hope I get all of them and not spend over five hundred dollars. But I think that's uh, a foregone conclusion at this point. Considering I just spent two hundred, so fuck me. I guess that's why I went to school, and that's why I have two jobs, <laughs> right? So Anna, you anything you're hoping to see out of the SDCC? Uh- um, not really. I mean, honestly, I uh, completely forgot that that was even happening. I think I'm, I'm still replaying E3 in my head, so everything else doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. That's just, fair. Just keeping it real. <laughs> it's fair. No, I, I sometimes it would be nice to just kind of tune out, tune out the news scene. I, I need to because I just I'm always looking at this shit. Always, 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 yeah, always. I mean, it's. it's, it's I mean, I know it was. Like, I have E B O C D. I know it's like three weeks ago, but just like still like repeating in my head, like, oh, you were there for like a week, like yep. you were there, and yep. people. Yep. Yep. They mean there's people that you know that dream of going, and so I'm still a little like, yeah, I got to go. But now you can do the old na 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 boo boo stuff. Oh your yeah, head <laughs> oh yeah. Every I got back and everyone's like, how was it? I'm like, amazing. They're like elaborate. Yeah. I'm like, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Did you just whip out your Darth Maul and be like, I got oh, this Oh, yeah. People were like, oh, you got that? I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, I did. Damn straight. <laughs> and the only reason we got it is because Anna went up and hustled for it. Because we, we were going to walk away. I was going to walk away like a pussy. And she's like, yo, where's our figure? I was like, hey, by the way, do we get one of those figures? And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, thanks. That was fantastic. Good move there. Good move. Yeah. He didn't take me up on my offer to buy the Darth Vader maquette. Uh, really but had. those models were so yeah. nice. Beautiful. They were. Okay, Anyways. gang, let's go ahead and uh, move on with our evenings. I know Keith's headed down to probably drink some suds and take some fantastic photos of something. And I'm definitely Perhaps. headed to B-Dubs to eat some, you know, average American food and drink a lot of shitty Coors Light. Oh, snap. Because that's my idea of a good Friday night. You know, that's what <laughs> happens when you're approaching 35 people, so... <laughs> they give you something to look forward to in your mid-30s. <laughs> All right, well... I think we uh, we kind of exhausted our, our topics. We uh, we've nailed down the whole dog days of summer gaming and definitely got my opinion out on the Batmobile. So I'm I'm calling it a success. So mm-hmm. everyone out there, as always, make sure to hit up entertainmentboot.com on a daily basis. And I'm not fucking around. Yes, we are a completely volunteer staff. But we do get content out every single day. Sometimes I will even do about 17 posts myself because I am a glutton for geekiness. <laughs> so hit up the site, follow our socials, at Entboot on Twitter, Entertainment Boot on YouTube, Entertainment Boot on Twitch. You know what to do. Just go to the site, click around, share it. Share it with your grandmothers. Share it with your babies. Everyone loves Entertainment Buddha. Trust me. Just go check it out. Make yourself a better geek one post at a time. Bye for now.